What's up, chickies? It's Baron here. Today we're going to be talking about um, Star Citizen and Patch 4.0. So watch this all the way through. We're going to be going through like an in-depth list on all the content that we can expect. And we're going to have this sort of overlay to show you what's going to be uh, back-end tech and pretty much ships, vehicles, um, then in-game content. Some I've put that are into back-end tech that could be considered to be in-game content because I just feel like some of the systems they're putting in place place uh, to manage the in-game sort of systems and what I mean from in-game content is like um, stations interiors and tools and whatnot that they're going to be including within these patches so we're going to get straight into it um, don't forget to join our discord check all the links in the description and we're literally at 8,000 subscribers I will be doing the announcement for that very soon so whoever I get in contact with I'm going to need you to contact me on discord or by email that I've got down in the description with addresses and whatnot I just need to figure out the logistics for that so well let's get into this and let's stop talking about everything else so for patch 4.0 we know that there's all going to be a lot of content coming um, Chris has already said that persistence and server meshing is going to be sort of pushed to quarter one of next year so there's a lot of stuff to cover in in this video and a lot of the content and I know no one's really done a video like this so I thought why not get into it and just start going over some of the stuff that we can expect so some of the first things the ships okay so by the time that Pyro comes out there's going to be a lot of ships releasing next to it now these are ships that I know of and ships that I've gone through the list some of you are going to say you know not a lot of them aren't going to be on time and you're correct it's going to be, probably be a 0.1 patch we just don't know this is just what I've seen and what I can put together from now so ships and vehicles they we're going to have the legionnaire so the reason I say the legionnaire is because the development time ends at the quarter four and hopefully this is when it comes into game because we're also getting ship to ship docking in game as well so this is going to need that functionality obviously uh, the next one is the RSI Apollo so this is the medical vessel with Q, uh, what is it tier 1 tier 2 and possibly even tier 3 beds it's modular um, so that's going to be necessary for um, Pyro, even Stanton, but a lot of the times it's going to be probably needed within the Pyro system. The next one you got the Argo SRV, so this is like the tugboat from Argo. Um, this is going to be built, implemented, and uh, balanced. Now, this is going to be a really important vessel in systems like Pyro, even Stanton, when someone gets damaged and they can't move their ship, they can't fly anywhere, even if they run out of fuel, it's going to be something major. Now, we've got the Tumble Ranger. I did skip over a ship because I want to leave that to last. Tumble Ranger, so I've obviously a lot of you know that's a two-wheeled bike, and I think that's going to be really important in sort of racing and just exploration in general being the vehicle that it is now there are two times unannounced ships one of them is going through like a concept art at this phase um, of going through Q4 so I'm not gonna I don't know if it'll actually be released the other one looks like it should be released next to Pyro but again there's gonna be a few other ships pushed in the Q3 and they could be pushed to the Citizen Con Q4 now the Banu Merchantman that is supposed to be releasing next to Pyro so I'm gonna expect that this thing's gonna be going through a lot of work over the next for a few months obviously being that they've added the brig they've added a lot of content to this ship and they want this to have its full functionality the next patch um, so 3.18 we're supposed to get the cargo refactor which is the basically path the way for these bigger ships like the Banu Merchantman and the whole series that have a larger um, quantity of um, what would you call it cargo space so it can cater for that so now we're getting into back-end tech we're looking at bug fixing and tech debt now this is for squadron 42 and star citizen so the bug fixing and the tech debt is basically it's general bug fixing and optimization for all game features and back-end tech so I'm gonna guess this will help developers and team members sort of um, be able to do this a little bit better and sort of manage that process a little bit more with the control now I did have the weeks in duration on this but I don't think that's really applicable to what we're doing right now now this is looking the next one data core deserializer so a C++ um, star service that uses normal game tech to read the data core data whether that be binary format or loose files and expose it via uh, via a diffusion API so this is looking to be probably a quarter three but then they could just finish it in the third quarter and release it into the fourth quarter to go with the 4.0 patch because obviously Chris has said this is going to be a major patch just like when they brought out 3.0 it's going to be a major stepping stone for the game and the systems that we are going to be getting in place and that we already have in place so we have 
is ecosystem enhancements. Now this one is, I would call it in-game, but again, it feels like a back-end piece that would be uh, something that would help with the front-end um, and in-game content. So enhancing the realism of plants and animals in their aspects and behaviors to in better immerse them in their respective environments. So we may even be getting animals in this. It doesn't have anything on the sort of the the release view or the tracker which you know kind of sucks but again this is going to be something that's majorly important to make the game look a little bit better and a little bit more polished next one is hex now some of you might just instantly think grim hex but that is far from it so this is increased hex tools features to uh, set enable player relations and developers to view and manipulate real-time data from all microservices in the mesh so i'm going to guess this is something to go with server meshing to help with um, how everything communicates and how the data is transponded through the uh, servers. So MISC support, this is miscellaneous support. Um, so it includes general support for other teams, updating existing features or small tasks that don't um, like necessitate a full entry. So I'm going to guess this is like just general support like it says, um, just for the uh, teams for the development side of things and just um, making their process a little bit easier. Now the biggest one, persistent streaming and server meshing. So persistence is going to be something that is major. Now obviously server meshing itself and persistent streaming is going to be implemented slowly over time. It's just going to be put it in, put into the code and put into the servers, but it's not going to be fully um implemented if that makes sense it's just going to be added in little bits to make the process of full implementation easier for the teams so proprietary server meshing and persistence technology will allow star citizen to scale up its shared universe across game services or servers eventually this technology will allow thousands of players to coexist in the verse once the first version of this is implemented the number of servers and players will increase over successive versions so there i've heard their first version they want to be at 100 players which it looks like in Q3 there's going to be something implemented so that um, HABs are going to be increased to 100 play limit. So I'm going to guess that would maybe increase the server sizes to maybe 200 people, but I'm going to say 100 for now. So it's just going to make things a little bit better. For those of you, of you who are worried about running into people more often when this is implemented, don't forget there's going to be two systems for this as well. So there's going to be two systems in the game implemented, and it's probably still going to be a vast um Sir, like world where people won't really run into people as such you might I mean you will see people but it's probably not going to be as often as what you think it will be it'll just be scalable but with two systems so we got resource management next this system will handle resources uh, for stations settlements cities and all other locations it will also unlock engineering station gameplay for ships landing players manage power CPU fuel shields coolant etc so it's just making stuff easier for your ships. So that could also be um, an in-game sort of content, but then it's sort of working on back-end sort of stuff. Now, SQ-42 vehicle support, this is obviously, the, it's in the name, Squ uh, Squadron 42 vehicle support. Now, the reason I put this in there is because it's sort of relatable to this because a lot of the ships that are in Squadron 42 will be getting used in the... Um, the verse as well. So it says polishing and iterating on various vehicles needed for the Squadron 42 single player campaign, which then would go into the PU as such. Now, it looks like I'm going to say Squadron 42 could be out next year. I'm just going to say a lot of people aren't going to agree with this, and I'm that's cool. That's cool. That's my opinion, though. <laughs> it really rattles some feathers. So now we're getting on to in game content. Now, this is where it really comes in, and this is where it's going to be a long sort of section. So, if you want to hear this, probably go have a coffee, have a rest, come back and chill out and listen to this. So, now we are getting into some interesting stuff. We've got building interiors. So, create gameplay focused layouts to fill the interiors of various buildings and landing zones. So, it just makes it feel a little bit more filled and probably a little bit more, um, I don't know, layouts feel better. Like when you go into an actual hab. It, in general this is just building interiors for it's probably stuff for pyro and stuff for stand and other systems they have cave cave archetypes i don't know why it said it like that so expanding the experience of traversing caves by creating more variety and developing new challenges uh, the setup of the caves will also make them more efficient for use in the creation of future caves so they're probably going to have like a general template or format so they can make caves a little bit easier for themselves to put out but it, it seems like exploration is going to be a bigger thing uh, in the coming patches and 
through the general like patch and gameplay sort of style. So cutting T2, so I'm going to guess T2 is sort of like a version. It's a little bit, um, I, I don't know, you got, it's a version that, but then it can also be um, like, so you got like when you have player interaction experience, you got TO, T1, T2. So it's just different segments of a certain uh, tool. So like you would have, this would be for the, um, uh, the little multi-tool that we got and then you'd have TO, T1, T2, T3. So all back-end tech tasks related to um, updating the cutting feature for the multi-tool that will be used in future location and mission updates. The continued development of the existing multi-tool technology will allow players to cut through specific objects. This will primarily include the ability to freeform on uh, specific surfaces. So that sounds pretty cool. It sounds like the cutting tool is going to be a really great uh, sort of item. We might be able to be able to cut through holes. It, it just there's so many different things. You might even be able to cut into people's bases and their modular bases. So, next one is underground facilities. Adding the underground facilities to the game, traversable areas offering gameplay opportunities in, um, to incorporate industrial environments. Now, things like this are already in the game, but it's just it's something that's always going to be built on. And there's a few things here that are already in the game, but it's just going through till when Pyro comes here because it's a consistent improvement. So the next one is the biggest one, ship. CPU. Designing, implementing computer blades for ships includes various blades that can be used to modify or improve certain aspects of a ship's functionality, such as unlocking more complex targeting abilities. So this is something that we've always all been talking about and it's something that we probably all want as well. So for our larger ships, we want the ability to have computer blades on our vessels and to be able to have more firepower without having to have a gunner, right? That's one of the biggest things that a lot of people in Star Citizen want right now. And it's just been a consistent conversation on the Spectrum forums and in like the community in general that I have noticed. The next one, seated uh, item handling. This feature will add the ability for players and NPCs to use items or smaller weapons while seated in a passenger seat of a vehicle or ship. So I'm going to guess when you're sitting in something like a Ranger or something of a smaller vessel or even a, just a vehicle in general, you'll be able to use weapons in hand without having to be shot at and not being able to do anything pretty much. So that's going to be another great thing. And that's probably something that will be used in Pyro. So like when you're in a rock and you're probably in a rock DS, the person that's on the outside can then shoot uh, the enemies that are in tail targeting you. But again, if they're in a larger vehicle that is, you know, unable to do damage to, then, you know, you're pretty much screwed anyway. Satellites point of interest. So populate the game universe with explorable satellites, locations that serve as points of interest for players. Now, this is interesting because I have seen one of these. It was a point of interest in a mission I went to, and it looked like there was a puzzle. Now, obviously, it wasn't like the Caterpillar puzzle. You had to click a few buttons, but I couldn't really figure it out. I don't know if it was fully implemented as such. The next one is plasma ammunition. So further back on this damage type will cause damage over time to actors, vehicles and ships. Larger weapons of this will also leave behind a hazard, causing further damage to anything in close proximity to it. This will fulfill the original vision that we had for the plasma weapons we already have in game and those uh, we have planned in the future. So it sounds like they're going to have splash damage and it's just going to be sort of an improvement on top of what they've already got in game. So we've got um, Pi. I called it Pi, but it's player interaction. Interaction experience T0, hints and interactions, um, 85 weeks duration on these. Now, I said I wasn't really going to go over the duration of these because it didn't really seem important at the time. So going further into this one, it seems like they're just improving some systems as well as just adding some stuff. So the player interaction experience, Pi. Uh, is a holistic array of complementary features and systems all related directly to the player, player status, item status, environment status, as well as interaction with both the game world and the obje objects within it are covered under these systems. So it seems like, you know, the hint system that you got and some other things are going to be improved. Now the next one, we got Pi T1, which is lockers and inventory. Lockers T1 introduces a consistent way to store clothes, armor, and items in a physicalized state. Also includes a more robust and tactile method of storing items on shelves and attachment surfaces. This builds on the personal inventory, expanding the personal UI to include lockers. But this could also mean with personalized hangers, this is when you start putting things on shelves and start 
putting like the, um, little trinkets that you like around the place. So Pi T2 visor, HUD and helmet builds on the existing heads up display. Um, so we're also getting some work done on our little uh, Moby glasses as well, but that's in some earlier patches. So with a new look and feel includes a new equip and remove experience, boot up, power down, sequences and transitions between FPS and ship HUD. So that sounds pretty interesting. Sounds like it's going to be something that's rather important and makes it feel a little bit better and a little less janky, I guess. So prone T1, uh, all, t all tasks relating to the implementing prone lying down movement by the player and NPCs. So I'm going to guess we already have something like this, but it's just, again, it's something that's being improved and something that's consistently worked on making things a little bit better within Star Citizen and making your life a little bit easier without having to make any sort of interruptions and just making things janky, which sometimes a lot of the FPS stuff is, but this should hopefully down the track make it a little bit better and a little bit more consistent so the next one is a big one pyro space station so adding small rundown rest stop rest uh, stations to the pyro system which provide basic services and use limited interiors so that sounds really really good i can't wait for this so pyro system planets and mission setup so completing the initial found uh, well, foundational work needed to implement the pyro system into the game so again that is something that's major for this patch that is one of the pretty much the biggest parts of this patch the most important part along with server meshing and whatnot so the next one is quantum simulation so revealed at citizen con 2019 the quantum simulation will serve as the background economy for star citizens uh, thousands of unseen simulated entities will carry out trade commerce piracy uh, security to populate populate in like inform other game systems so again this is already implemented but again, it's something that's consistently developed and worked on. Team members are never going to stop working on this. It's just going to go through different phases and better phases, making it a little bit better of an experience for us. So the next one is Quantum Travel Experience. Updating Quantum Travel mechanic to move players in a more physically realistic way and improve the general QT experience adjusting new spooling and calibrating interdictions and entering exiting work. So it seems like it's just something to improve the system, make it a little bit more, um, I don't know, streamlined for players and just in general improvement. So there'll be something that's really interesting to see. Next one, we got Rasta. Now, at first I was like, what is this? But then it made a little bit more sense when I read about it. So developing, implementing Rasta, a tool that allows the placement of modular structures on planet surfaces, including the deformation of the surrounding terrain to accommodate it. So pretty much flattening surfaces and making it easier to build on. This will eventually be used by players to place their own structures, such as with the Consolidated Outland Pioneer, which is something that we need. And hopefully it won't be too far away after this patch, which... I'm going to be very interested to see what 2023 brings for Star Citizen. I think for content-wise, it's going to be fantastic again. So the next one is Rescue Transport Missions. So taking advantage of AI, follow behaviors to create missions where players transport customers from one location to another, allow with prototype mission where players must rescue in imperiled clients from dangerous situations and escort them to safety. So this seems like it's going to be something that's team-based. You might be able to do it by yourself, but obviously you're going to need people to do this um, but that seems like it's going to be something that's really cool that will again change star citizen and the way people play and the way they structure their fleets with unless they got a really like big ridiculous fleet so we got next one is pressure uh, room depressurization creating the ability for players to increase and decrease the atmospheric pressure in a refined well defined closed room so that seems like it's going to be really interesting and again what happens when you open the door will there be like a, um, an atmospheric or depressurization where it could cause an explosion upon opening something and you just have to sort of stabilize the room before you do so that will be interesting so ocean shader improvements, that's already in the game, but again, it's getting reworked. The ocean shader to use more physically accurate um, refraction and reflection with energy conservation, unifying the features set with other water shaders and balancing performance between orbital and close-up situations. So again, if you were out in orbit, it'll look a little bit different to when you're up close. Obviously, it'll be a little bit more defined and refined when you're up close. Next one will be interesting, outpost theme variants. So adding theme variants to colonial... Um, colonialism uh, outpost which allows us to create different points of interest in the world themes will range from abandoned mining research and many more that would be this is going to be really awesome and this stuff's getting really good like now you can see why 4.0 is going to be really 
really great and something that's going to change Star Citizen forever. So one that we were expecting a little bit earlier this year but has been pushed back because of some other content and some back-end stuff that wasn't in the game, Persistent Hangers. Work that grants players the ability to have their own Persistent Hangers. This will also allow changes to the cargo gameplay loop by allowing players to pack their grids manually. So this is the cargo sort of refactor system um, included with the Hangar Persistence. But again... People keep assuming that packing their own grids with cargo is going to be something that's going to be a time-consuming thing. We're going to have NPCs eventually that can do this. It's just we had AI um, uh, Star Citizen Live not too long ago. But again, it's just think of real-life situations. Like you, like what? Well, so far into the future, it's not going to be like a a barbaric sort of caveman system. The next one, we got flak ammunition. This new type triggers on proximity or ex, oh, expiration, expiration so like expiry and whatnot, causing a cons- concentrated burst of shrapnel to damage targets in an area. So just like flak cannons in sort of World War II and even common um, more recent times as well when you're shooting at an aircraft. So the next one is derelict spaceships. We have this. But it's gonna, there's going to be more implemented. They're going to be improved and consistently worked on. Um, so points of interest that will uh, be scattered on planets, they will be derelict spaceships with some type of activity, puzzle, traversal, hostile AI, and some type of reward in resolving in resolving said activity. Released in 3.16, but this may expand with more being added over the two systems, as I just mentioned. So the next one is Incendiary Ammo. This is a new ballistic projectile that burns on impact, causing the target to take damage over time and potentially causing items in the environment to catch fire. This is another really interesting one. It seems like we're getting different ammo types, and this is something that's going to be needed, whether or not it's going to be something for your weapon that's in hand or even for your ship at the time. That's going to be really interesting. Next one is another great one. This just keeps getting better. Is Jump Points. Building ammo the functionality, visual and audio effects for the jump points to use to travel between systems and setting them up in game, including necessary vehicle items and functionality, the point, the jump points themselves and their inner tunnel. So if you've seen that video of the citizen con of the character sort of jumping through that jump point, this is something like what this is going to be and it's going to be something that's going to be major between the two systems and all other systems in the future of Star Citizen. So if you have any questions about this, let us know down in the comments. Join our Discord as well. It's something that is very important right now. So the next one is Lava Tech modifying the and tuning river tech to produce immerse impressive layer lava rivers and lakes. So just like when we got rivers now, this is gonna be something but the same, but it's gonna be in lava. Next one is uh, Life Support T0, implementing the first iteration of onboard life support systems in ships, which entails a ship component that generates air when turned on and management of said life support component within the vehicle loadout manager. So this is going to be something important. It could also be something to do with the Apollo and just ships in general and making that experience a little bit more immersive and something that's a little bit more uh, realistic in um, said, well, in some ways speaking, but not, you know, in some other aspects. The next one, Lawville Cityscape. So the this is a rework of the Lawville skyline to better fit the scale of the city and it's in distinctive buildings. So it seems like it's going to be improved, something that's going to be made to look better and just a, maybe even a general um, change. So like it says, a rework. The next one is an MFD rework. So this will both rebuild ship MFDs with their new building blocks UI technology as well as completely redesign them in an effort to make them more customizable, better matched to ship aesthetics and better at serving ship gameplay. So again, we may see these getting worked on generally over the next year or so, which is going to be really cool to see. Next one is Actor Status T2. Actor Status Tier 2 looks at a variety of new elements such as hygiene, uh, NPC status tracking, multiple bites, DNA integrity, uh, medical insurance, cybernetics limbs, and cloning. So this is sounds like something in back end, but a lot of stuff that's in the front end that we're going to need, like the medical insurance, um, hygiene and whatnot. So you're going to need to keep a good hygiene in the game to be healthy and whatnot, which is kind of ridiculous. But again, it's going to be something that's interesting to add this aspect to the game. 
So disarray ammunition, this is a new charged ballistic projectile that emits electromagnetic pulses, uh, helping to not only damage the target, also to disrupt power systems. So this is something that could be really major with the Legionnaire. We were sort of hypothesizing and theory crafting about this the other night. But this sort of, if you can have this on the ship and a gun, this will change the fact of being able to board an Idris or a Javelin. But again, you have to get through those crews within those ships to be able to do something so successfully. So distortion propagation, further work on this game type on, to allow correct propagation into systems. This makes the location of impact much more important as powered items closer to the impact will begin to suffer more severely. This will fulfill the original vision we had for the distortion weapons we already have in game and those we have planned for in the future. So this is something that's going to be really interesting. It's cool to see. I can't really build on this too much. It's sort of self-explanatory with the distortion weapons we have. But again, it seems like it could apply to some other aspects within the game like the pyro um, um, system with its sun going into a supernova or a prolonged supernova, which isn't even a thing. So the next one, this is a major thing for the Legionnaire. So this is major, major. Docking ship to ship. So all tasks related to the feature that allow smaller ships to dock in larger ships while in game is pretty much worked on and implemented to make this a thing, which is going to be really freaking cool. So now a lot of people think that the ship to ship docking, having a moving ship with another one, is going to be something that you're going to have to sort of maneuver the ship around. That's not entirely true because we have a docking procedure and the ship that is in question, the Legionnaire, I'm rather sure that it has a docking procedure hacking ability so that it can dock and pretty much um, approve the docking access. And again, it may alert the pilot and whoever is on the ship and the crew, but it's just going to make it a little bit better and a little bit easier. So dynamic events. Continued back to back end tech to support the development of uh, dynamic events in Star Citizen ever expanding adverse. Um, now this is something like what well, we have nine tails locked down, um, all the other ones as well. So jump point and whatnot, just making those sort of um, Xeno thread as well, but making them a little bit more dynamic. And again, there may be more of these and more concentrated amounts because it's just something that Star Citizen is going to need. It's something that the game is going to always have. And it's going to be something that's really interesting and makes the game really, really enjoyable. So check these out. Let me know what you think down in the comments. It's really always good to hear what you all think. I think this patch 4.0 is going to be freaking insane. Um, I can't wait. I don't know about all of you, but I cannot wait personally. So let me know in the comments. I'm always interested to see what everyone says. Let's not be too hostile. Let's not be toxic or anything. Let's just have a good time talking about this and look forward to the future of Star Citizen. Hope you all enjoyed. I'll see you in the verse.